Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to talk about day 15 in the heads-up match between Daniel Negreanu and Doug Polk. So through the first 14 days, we are looking at Doug being up $565,000 through the course of 7,015 hands. Before we jump into some hand reviews from day 15, I want to talk about what made day 15 so special as there was a lot of fun things going on. Here is a tweet from Doug on November 29th. He said, if this gets 25,000 retweets, I'll stream a session of my 200-400 heads up challenge versus Daniel Negreanu with an occasional hold card. So obviously this got people really excited. Not quite excited enough though, as you guys can see, it only got 5,000 retweets. But not to worry, Doug decided that the 5,000 was enough. So he said, okay, you guys got close enough, let's roll. Planning on most likely this Friday session streaming it. Obviously the fans were excited to get to see uh, some of Doug's whole cards. It wasn't going to be all of them, but as in the first 30 minutes of the match, Doug was struggling it throughout to try and cover his whole cards. Also, there was a section on the WSOP client uh, where it shows the strength of your hand, and Doug did not cover this for the first 30 minutes, which led to some more information being available than maybe he wanted. And Max Silver came out with this great tweet here. He said, everything you do at the table conveys information at Doug Polk. So obviously making fun of Negroni's masterclass there. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner here where it says your hand high card ace so that's what was showing what doug had so although doug thought he wasn't giving any information away he was and it was pretty funny throughout because the chat was obviously catching this before he was so he'd be saying like oh the, you guys will never know what this hand was and then the chat would just be coming back with him oh we, oh, we all know you had pocket jack so it was pretty funny to see uh, definitely entertaining i know i was watching doug stream throughout and he was rolling with the punches though it was great Okay, so now that we've gone over the pre-match shenanigans here, let's jump into three hands from the session. Uh, this session was really action-packed. It was really hard to pick only three hands. Um, but if I was going to go through all the big hands of the session, this video might be close to an hour. So let's jump into three of the biggest ones here. So Doug opens up the button with the king four of spades, and Daniel has pocket aces here in the big blind. He three bets, Doug four bets, and Daniel just calls. Uh, this will be funny if you guys have been watching Negreanu. He's been making some videos and talking about how the last 10 times he's had aces, Doug has folded to him pre-flop. Obviously, it looks like he's finally getting some action here. Um, it is interesting in Daniel's situation once Doug four bets. Uh, obviously, Daniel could be jamming all in here. Um, I do like him trapping, though. As we know, Doug can have a wider four bet range. And if you're ever going to trap, aces is a really good hand to do it without a position just because it's not as likely there's going to be bad boards for you. So whereas if Negreanu had like queens here, I would definitely prefer just to five bet jam it because, you know, obviously an ace or a king can come up. That's a bad card. And also when you're Negreanu with two aces, it's less likely that Doug has an ace. So it makes it really unlikely he has aces and also makes it much less likely he has ace king. So I do like the flat there. And Doug's four bet preflop, I would imagine this is a mixed strategy. Some flatting of the three bet some four betting and the flop comes jack two two rainbow so super dry board here daniel checks and doug puts out a small bet and daniel calls pretty standard here from doug is the pre-flop four better he definitely has all the big pairs here so he goes ahead and just puts out a small bet on a really dry board daniel again i don't think there's any reason to raise we want to keep doug's bluffs in here so he just calls and turn is the three of spades so Daniel checks and Doug checks back. So this is an interesting decision point for Doug here. So Daniel only has 40,000 behind with the pot at 31K. So I think Doug has two options here on the turn. Um, he can either check like he did, or I would say you probably want to be jamming all in with his specific hand, uh, just because he has the flush draw there. He has the overcard or what he thinks is an overcard with a king. Um, when you pick up some equity here, I don't mind just calling, especially here on such a low and dry board. Um, I don't mind just taking your equity here as you do have any spade and what he might feel like any king that would be good for his hand as well. Uh, River is the queen, which is interesting here. And Daniel checks, and I really like his check here for a few reasons. Uh, so one is obviously I think the queen is going to be a better card for the four better than the guy who just cold calls uh, the four bet. He can have some like queen jack, queen 10 suited in his range. Um, but I do like checking here, especially to an opponent like Doug, who is definitely capable of bluffing. Not only could Doug have picked up the queen, but this is a good bluff card for him. And trying to get Daniel off a of hand, like maybe pocket 10s, pocket 9s, pocket 8s, um, maybe a jack, like maybe trying to get a jack to fold. Um, you could be going for that. And Doug's bet here is super polarizing. He's really saying he has a queen or better um, when he jams here. And when check two, I do like Doug's decision to jam. And... Uh, 
and Daniel does make the snap call, so his trap works out perfectly, and he wins a $126,000 pot. Moving on to our second hand we're going to review today. Doug opens the button up with the 5-3 of diamonds, and Daniel puts in the 3-bet with queens from the big line here, and Doug calls. 5-3 um, suited might not seem like a great hand. Heads up, in position though, it's a little bit better. And obviously they're really deep at this point, so there's still 71,000 effective behind after the money goes in for the 3-bet. Um, so I do not mind calling here with Doug's hand. And the flop becomes 9-4-2, two hearts. So Daniel goes ahead and bets out three quarters pot here. And we see Doug make the call. I do like the, Doug's decision to just call here. Obviously he can raise, but like what is he representing at that point? Um, it's, I mean, sets of two, sets of fours, and like flush draws kind of is like what you're more or less going with here. Um, so, and with Daniel still having all these over pairs in his range, just like he does in this situation, I do like just calling. Also, if Doug, if there's an ace on the turn, it would be a huge card for him as potentially Daniel could have a hand like ace, king, ace, queen. Also, if he doesn't have one of those hands, it is a good card for him to bluff. And obviously the ace would make Doug go straight. And the six of clubs on the turn. So huge card for Doug here as he turns the straight. Daniel checks with 21K in the pot and the effective stack being 65K. I do prefer a bet here in Daniel's situation. Um, I know you're up against the opponent like Doug who is capable of running some bluffs, but I think I would want to bet here targeting his 9X hands, maybe pocket 8s, pocket 7s that doesn't believe you. If he has a heart draw, we want to charge him a bit. If he has pocket 10s or jacks, we do want to build this up. Also, this way, if we bet here in Daniel's situation, we can set up a river jam. Uh, he does decide to check though, and Doug, when he hits a straight, I think has a pretty clear bet. So he does a bet, and Negranu goes with the check jam here. So interesting here. I don't mind this line either. Like I said, I do prefer Negranu just betting the turn himself. Um, the line he's taken here can look a lot like he just has like two high heart cards. Uh, so he has a big draw that he's just kind of going with and trying to just throw in the money on the turn. And uh, obviously once Daniel jams here, Doug does make the quick call and he holds. It was really funny. I was watching Doug's stream when he did this and he started jumping around, doing some boxing moves and stuff. And it was, it was really entertaining to watch. Next, we're going to jump into the third and final hand we'll review today. And guys, the classic cooler, the cooler of all coolers, heads up, aces versus kings. The crazy thing to note here and important when analyzing this hand is they're about 300 big blinds deep. Um, so the big blind's only $400. And Daniel has the effective stack here at the 116K. So Daniel opens the button with aces here. Doug puts in the three bet with kings. Daniel four bets and Doug just calls. So this is the spot I really want to talk about in the decision tree here. Um, definitely pretty standard three bet from Doug here pre-flop. Daniel has a pretty clear four bet, I think. I don't think I'm like really ever trapping aces in this spot, but definitely not doing it when we're this deep. And when Doug gets back here, I think it really just depends on how he constructs his range. Does he have a five betting range here that's not all in? Because they're deep enough where it wouldn't be a five bet jam. He would be putting in like maybe 25K. Uh, so I think if Doug it doesn't have a five bet bluffing range here at this stack depth, I do think you'd want to be calling with your entire continue range, which would include Kings. Um, if he does mix in some bluffs here, um, it would be interesting. The tough thing though here is in this challenge that they haven't really been this deep yet. So um, it would be kind of setting up new trends. With all of that said, I do agree with Doug flatting the four bet. And obviously you might be like, oh, David, you're just saying that because he has kings or his aces. But I really do think it is the best play here. So we see a flop of 10, 5, 4, rainbow. And Doug's going to go ahead and check. Daniel bet's really small and Doug calls. So pretty standard uh, pre or on the flop here when Doug checks, Daniel bets. I think the decision is on Doug again, where it's like, because we underrepped our hand so much pre-flop, do we consider raising it here? And I think on this exact board, the answer is no here. So like what we when we raise here, we want to think about what value hands can we have, but also what draws could we have in this situation? Um, if there was a flush draw here, and I would maybe consider check raising it. So like, let's say it was 10, 5, 4 with two hearts. Um, I think you could do that just because you have a little bit more bluffs in your range. And uh, But I think on this exact board, I do like just the check call. And the turn is a seven of clubs. Doug goes ahead and checks. 
And then Daniel checks back. I do want to see a bet from Daniel. And again, guys, I'm not just saying this because it's like, oh, well, he, we know the other guy has kings looking in the hand. But I remember seeing this hand take place in action. And because it was such a big pot, like obviously you're focused on it. And I was like, if Daniel is an overpair here, I definitely would want to see him betting, at least with the aces, kings, and queens. Maybe the jacks we check back. Um, but definitely with the aces here, I think you got to be putting in a bet for value. Um, he does decide to check though. And the river is the 10 of spades. So Doug decides to use a pot size bet here with his kings on the river. And I think Negreanu has a pretty clear just call. So obviously he's not folding here, um, but I don't think he can raise either. So like if th this is one of those situations where Negreanu is going to expect that he almost always has the best hand. Um, obviously Doug can have some jack 10, queen 10 suit and stuff like that, but Negreanu is going to expect most of the time he has the best hand. But the question is if Negreanu raises, and at this point he'd have to be raising all in, when he raises all in, is Doug going to have enough hands that are worse than Negreanu's that will call him? Or is it always the only hands that call him going to be the ones that beat him? So um, I think it's a pretty clear just call there from Daniel. And fortunately for Doug, he does not lose an entire stack with kings against aces. And uh, still a sizable one though, but obviously when you see the hands pre-flop, you would expect it to be for the entire stack most of the time a wild session and Daniel would end up winning $46,000 through the course of 452 hands. And that puts the total at Doug being up about $519,000 through 7,469 hands. So uh, I think it'll be interesting. As I'd mentioned earlier, Doug was showing some whole cards. He was streaming a bit. I'm wondering if this will help Daniel and his team kind of review some hands, especially because Doug was giving away a little more information than he was hoping to uh, before the stream had started. So um, I believe that the next stream will most likely be Monday, December 7th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, my plan is for my next video on the challenge to be on the Monday session, so that'll be up Tuesday afternoon. And uh, if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. That way you can get uh, notified when a new video is released.